Hello viewers, SuperGT here. So a couple of weeks ago, we had the Mazda Roadster Touring Car added into the game. I did a couple of open lobbies a while back, and this car produced some very intense racing, very close racing. Let's see if that's gonna be the case in today's video. Around Sukuba once again, this is a track we featured in that aforementioned live stream slash open lobby, and it made for some very good races. Let's see if the same thing can happen again. So, the Mazda MX-5, cool little touring car this, and um, one thing you should note, don't leave traction control on. Because of course it is race A, you get gifted the car, uh, so traction control will be on at the start, so make sure you turn it off, because that really did cost me coming out of that first corner. And that mistake there is gonna cost me through the second corner. I've been overtaken by Fanny, of all people. So back down to where I started, now, of course, in these races, you don't have much time to get things done. Five laps, and it's only just over a minute for a lap. So the race takes about five and a half minutes. It's not very long at all. So, of course, as always, number one, qualify well. Do your qualifying. Get your qualifying lap up to scratch. If you're starting in the mid-pack, you've got no chance unless everyone kills each other. So make sure you qualify well. Definitely do that. And then two, don't make mistakes. It sounds easy, but um, one little mistake on this race, and you know you're just gonna you're gonna drop backwards. You don't have much time to recover that uh, that time lost. So two two big things for you there. Also, drive fast and don't crash. I find that often helps in motorsport, but that's just me. Let me know. Let me know if driving fast and not crashing helps you. I think it should. But maybe it doesn't, I don't know. So lap number two now, race is settled down. And it's very hard actually for the leaders to escape the slipstream because of course they've changed it. The suck zone is about 1.2 seconds now, it's really big. Uh, formerly 0.8 seconds, but things have changed around here. So Fanny goes a little bit wider the mark and I'm up the inside. <laughs> so up into the final corner let's try to break away from the fanny and uh, catch up with nico the frenchman who was on pole position you can't go very wide there you can use all of that green uh, what, is, what even is it astroturf i don't even think it's astroturf just use it where well, you can use it you don't want to use all of it because i think you've gone too wide if you use all of it but it's there to be used so lap number three, again, just checking that, uh, the gap. So about three quarters of a second, a little bit too deep into that corner. Uh, but in the slipstream, so we're okay. Um, a bit of an assault from the Czech driver, but we just rebuff the attack and can continue on our merry way to catching up with our good friend Nico. Let's see if we can get the job done. So 105.9 uh, 105 lap 2, 105.9 lap 3, good consistency, and we are two tenths up. We should be quick, really, we should be quicker than the leader because we're in the slipstream. He's made a mistake through the hairpin. I'm going to be firmly on his tail now, just over three tenths of a second away. So he's going to get quite close down the back straight, four tenths of a second up now on our previous best, so this is going to be a very good lap, as long as we can get the last two corners correct. Second to last corner done nicely. Into the slipstream then, down the back straight. The final corner is an overtaking opportunity, but you ideally need to be alongside, you can't really lunge for it. As we come in, on late on the brakes, into that late apex, on the power nice and early, to go back out to the outside. One lap to go, come on then. Is France versus Britain. Who's going to win? 105.4 scintillating pace being displayed here, albeit slipstream assisted, but they all count. Uh, turn one navigated into the little chicane here, just a sort of an entryway into the hairpin. I'm going to go deep as he's going to cover the inside and look for the better exit. So I've got the good exit right on his tail now. This is the thing about these cars, you can race them very closely. Dirty air doesn't really factor in too much so you can afford to get right behind people and living up to the r4m name here i'm just going to go for savage lunge of the millennium 
at least um, I have not seen any better lunges since the year 2000 and there won't be any one any better ones until the year 3000 so we might as well just give him the award now for best lunge of the millennium it's a win albeit with a savage dirty lunge not the cleanest move you've ever seen of all time so we move to the next race um, pretty much the same guys in here so a bit of trash control off the line but then uh, remove it before we come into turn one you can try to force this guy narrow then take the wider line it is possible to go around the outside but you are relying on the other driver to sort of mess up in some way uh, ideally by breaking too early and that hasn't happened on this occasion so we're gonna have to settle back into third and this shows you just how important the qualifying is ideally you need to be right at the front as that obviously helps and you know the main thing is really if I try to go for overtakes on the guy in second now we're both probably going to lose time and then that just gives enough of a gap for the leader to get away in most cases so that is why it's very difficult to go through the back and gain lots of positions so we're going to take alternative lines there and we'll go for the cutback on the way out we have the run so he has the advantage of the slipstream he needs to just move left and stay behind the leader and then he'll actually have an advantage as we come up towards the final corner I have a slight inside line I wasn't quite alongside well I was a little bit but we just go for the move and just about get it done across the line then back into second or into second for the first time in this race and it's basically as you were in the previous one trying to catch up with the Frenchman again and hopefully this time we can pull off a bit of a cleaner maneuver in order to hopefully try to win the race 105.6 so the big laps are coming out now Q1 party mode all up in here so for the first corner so that one I mean the first corner there you really need to sort of break actually it's actually it actually really tricks you to break it in too early uh, but too late sorry and I've actually braked a little bit too late there although I would say he kind of breaks quite a lot um, but he just keeps the position and he's going to win this one didn't really want to go for a move there to be honest but um, I think he went quite defensive but he wins the race so one all now we have uh, a yellow car I was trying to determine the quickest colour so I choose every different colour you can get so we're going for yellow this time away from the line we have an added Italian thrown into the mix so I'm starting fourth one position down uh, displaced by this Italian who's going to go for a rather rude move um, He's obviously been taking inspiration from R4M Shadow GT and I might have to sign him up to the R4M factory squad for, 20, for the 2020 campaign of ramming. But for now, he's just death for 83. So we're buffing assault through the hairpin against the check driver once again. The fanny is just trying to, is trying to assault me from behind, but we uh, managed to stay ahead. Down the back straight, the Italian fancied some rather interesting lines, um, just, uh, weaving up and down, left and right, just to try to break the toe. So, is this this Frenchman must be raging inside because this this lobby did get a little bit aggressive, I must say. Obviously, with my move on the first race, setting the tone for pure filth later on, and then the Italian taking inspiration and going for a, a brutal dive bomb into turn one. Um, you could argue the Frenchman could have covered it off but then should he have lunged maybe maybe not probably not definitely not into turn one uh, not quite there it's very difficult to go for a late lunge in this car because I don't know it's just, it's just not quick enough to go for those big moves uh, the braking zones aren't big enough really especially into that into turn one into these two hairpins is a bit easier he goes a little bit wide I'm going to go for the cut back and this is a good test to see if he's uh, on terms with me. I don't think he is because he's just going to try to run me off after back out. And that was pretty much that. I mean, it looks like a very small little minor moment. But I think when you get to the front of these races and you get little moments like that where someone might run you off a little bit, you can tell there's a bit of anger in the air. Uh, things aren't all, 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 uh, all at peace, should we say. Uh, gone for the silver car this time around. Come on, Super GT. Or come on, Shadow GT. Just trying to win a race for once. Well, we didn't win the first one. But, um, let's, let's do one nicely. So, 
our Italian friend there with a one bar connection, he obviously needs to bring up Wi-Fi password to get the Wi-Fi password to improve his connection. He just does the same thing again, just goes in for a savage dive bomb and just shoves him wide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get past Nico this time and try to go around his outside. He's on my left hand side just judging by the radar. I've gone a little bit too wide and that's gonna let Nico up the inside and back into third. So utter filth on display here this lobby as I say is not really one that was particularly clean um, and I certainly contributed to that down into the hairpin gonna go deep uh, it's probably better to do that and just take an outside line rather than just queue up on the inside and you can see here I've kind of got a good exit and we go to the left hand side and I'm gonna get a good run down the back straight uh, it's gonna be very difficult to go around the outside though very long corner is this final one almost 180 degrees goes seemingly on forever but well it's just ended there so it actually doesn't go on forever little known fact that into turn one breaking just after the tarmac runoff on the left hand side and then you kind of trail breaking in turning while braking and then loosely off the brake and then gently onto the throttle and then you power away into this mini straight into the central corner of the circuit so I mean this this car is very well suited to this track as I kind of get bundled wide rather rudely at the hairpin so things are again getting very aggressive here in the mid pack and it's a it's a trio of blue cars maybe the blue car is the, is the best colour I didn't choose a blue car maybe I need to choose the blue one as we go into the next hairpin so yeah things not not completely uh, peaceful today I have to try to force my way back because sometimes you get into these lobbies and it's like oh I see how it is people are getting their elbows out here so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same you know well I did it I did it in the race in the first race but we're gonna do it a little bit more here as a mon monster one boy is gonna get what's coming to him as he got, covers the inside and then I move and then he reacts and then I think you know what I don't care anymore mate you are getting bundled wide that's what you get and for me, I mean, <laughs> I just call that one all. You bundle me wide, I bundle you back. There we go, job done. So back into third, I have to try to get back onto terms with the top two, who are most certainly very much fighting intensely for that lead. I think Nico's been uh, unfairly maligned so far, been bundled wide by Shadow, been bundled wide twice by Nico. Maybe should have learned his lesson though, covered the inside, just give them no chance of doing it. For now, he's sitting there in second on the tail of the soon-to-be R4M DEFRA 83. So final lap then, no, penultimate lap, sorry. Lap four or five, again a short race, you know, much time to get things done, but we are catching up and there's a chance to get this done. Could it be possible that these two guys will wipe each other out? There is contact, but it's not enough to truly send them both into the shadow realm. The Italian just gets the position and lives to fight another day in the lead of the race with one lap plus two corners to go. The Frenchman's looking for the move. Is he going to go for it? Into the hairpin. The Italian covers very late, it must be said. We're coming across at the last moment. We're going to go for the double cutback. Look at this. We're going to have the inside line into the final corner. No, no, I'm not. Because I think the, the Frenchman just lost control slightly. And that was a very good opportunity to go up into the lead, but it's kind of evaporated and I'm not quite alongside enough to truly go for that move. So I just have to kind of back out of it, stay into third uh, for now. Lift a fight for another day into turn one for the final time. Come on, can we get this victory? Let's go, look, go looking around the outside, that's the only way I can go. A bit of contact forces me wide to settle in behind. There's not much I can do about this. It is a very tight and narrow circuit is a Sukuba so the other driver covers the inside there's not much you can do about it and on this occasion he's missed the apex entirely so we've got the inside on the exit he's alongside I'm slightly ahead going to this corner and as we come through I'm just gonna get bundled off bundled wide come back onto the track and now the other Frenchman is gonna come in for the double assault I'm in a Frenchman sandwich into the final hairpin and well there we go if it's a game of football He's just won 2 1 against me. Finished fourth. Quite an annoying race. I'm expecting better than this, but um, 
maybe I really need to truly, I don't need to get my elbows out, I need to put, put some boxing gloves on and get my fists out, because um, obviously my approach isn't working. So here's my qualifying lap, you see the lines I'm taking, you need to be really, you need to be really early on the throttle coming out of that first corner. Nice and smooth through here, braking just before the end of the curve on the right, and that sets you in into the apex, nice and patient off the brakes, and then back onto the throttle early, back over to the left hand side, I'm not sure if you can take this corner flat out, you probably can if you take enough of the grass on the inside, but I was just lifting slightly, nice and smooth through here, don't get any wheel spin, don't get any sliding, braking halfway down the green astro turf on the left hand side there, that sets you into this corner quite nicely, and again early on the throttle, as you're going out onto a long straight, and we're actually about a quarter of a second up on our 105.8 set on lap two. So as long as we get this final corner correct, then we've uh, we've got a new record, a personal record, not a world record, of course. Uh, it is a difficult corner that, but you can get on the throttle very early, and again, use all of the tarmac or use the green stuff on the outside. So we're 105.6, so not too bad a lap. But unfortunately for me, um, as as good as I, well, as good as that lap was, it didn't really improve my grid position for the next race. Up against the same guys once again. Now Nico did actually ask the Italian, you know, well done, but let's not do those uh, turn one lunges. And on this occasion, he obliged. He didn't do the turn one lunge, so he's actually uh, learning his lesson. He didn't quite cover it off. Maybe he should have done. But instead, instead of doing it at turn one, he just did it at turn two instead. <laughs> So he just comes in and bundles him off completely. So to be fair, he carried out his, um, he complied with his request. Don't bun, don't, you know, don't lunge me at turn one. Okay, I'll just bundle you off at turn two instead. And I thought, I wanted to form an alliance with the, with the Frenchman by going off on the R4M to be death for 83. And uh, it was quite an interesting little battle, this, down the back straight. I, at this point, I kind of just given up on actual racing because it just descended into a maelstrom of tapping and ramming through most of these corners. So things weren't totally clean. And I'm surprised my sportsmanship rating didn't go down to minus 80 gazillion, or whatever the lowest possible number is, that out of 99. So through the first corner, I'm absolutely surprised he gave me space on the exit here. I'm well and truly surprised he did. Going through here, um, there wasn't all the space in the world, as I almost get spun out <laughs> as uh, just regain control. I'm going to get bundled wide, and by this point I just kind of had enough. I really just had enough of racing, so it's not turned out very well. It's one of those times where you just need to quit and maybe come back another time when, when there's different people involved. But there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video as always. Let me know your thoughts, and, and a big thank you to everyone for supporting the channel, especially the Gran Turismo videos because I got recognized by Polyphony Digital going to New York for the world tour. And that's all down to the recognition of the YouTube videos, um, pretty much. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you again to all the members of the channel and the Patreon supporters. I shall see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.